We are now going to talk about fringe benefits. So a couple of things about fringe benefits. First thing is you will study the income tax implications of this completely separately from what we are doing here. But just a quick little recap on what a fringe benefit is. A fringe benefit is if your employer gives you something which is over and above your normal salary. So for example, your employer gives you a company car or your employer says, um, here is an old computer, you can take it as yours. Or the employer gives you holiday accommodation. Right? There's a whole bunch of variety of them. Now, what you'll see in the VAT Act, it says, so, X Limited gives Mr. A a fringe benefit. What you will see is, if this section applies, X Limited will have to calculate output tax on that fringe benefit. So this is an output tax section for the employer who the person who is giving it. So if your employer gives you a computer as a fringe benefit, your employer will have to raise VAT on that. Okay, so they'll have to put it in the return. They're not going to issue an invoice. So basically your employer will raise output tax. Now guys, there are basically three situations, three types of fringe benefits on which there's VAT. So there's a lot of actual fringe benefit sections. There's things like low interest loans, subsidies, um, accommodation, right? all sorts of things like that. Your employer can pay your medical aid, all of these things. All of those do not attract VAT because most of them are financial services. The only ones that do attract VAT are the following three. And that is when your employer gives you trading stock, when your employer gives you an asset, so not trading stock but an old de desk or a computer. These two are basically considered the same tra uh, type of fringe benefit, but they've got slightly different value rules. And then a company car. Now what I want you to see is, the first two, they will be treated in one way, the VAT Act, and the company car has its own separate rules, which you'll see. So just be aware of that. Okay. Now remember, when we discuss VAT, you need to be able to discuss definitions, if there's any. There's no, in this case, the value rule, right? The value rule, you'll see, the timing rule, and any special rule. There's no real special rule here, but we've got special value and timing rules. The value rule says, you must calculate the VAT on the cash equivalent of the fringe benefit. Now, the cash equivalent is the amount which we learn how to calculate in the seventh schedule of the income tax act. So it's the income tax amount. Right? Company cars just have a different formula. The timing rule in section 97 tells you you account for it in the month which the fringe benefit is given. Right. So how do you know what this cash equivalent is? So we talk first now of assets, uh, the fringe benefit which is not a company car. What is the cash equivalent? And like I've said, guys, you'll study this in income tax a lot more. But for now, crash course, if you can't remember, the cash equivalent works as follows. If you give trading stock to an employee, it is the lower of the cost or the market value. If you give an asset to the employee, right, if the employer went specifically to purchase it to give it to the employee, then you use the cost to the employer. So the employer says, I'm going to buy you a computer that I want you to give you as a present. And the employer goes out specifically to the shop, buys a computer, and gives you that computer. So why did it go to the shop? To buy you that computer. Right, then you use the cost. If the asset was not purchased specifically to give to the employee, then you use the market value. So this will be, for example, the employer went and bought a computer to use in the accounting office. So why did they buy it? For the accounting office. A year or two later, they give it to you. So they didn't buy it originally to give it to you. Only at some point later they made a decision. Then you use the market value. Now, that value you determined here, that's the cash equivalent. That amount times 15 over 115 times the percentage taxable supplies. Now, just ignore the percentage taxable supplies for now. The cash equivalent is usually an amount excluding VAT. So let me explain to you. X Limited buys trading stock for 115,000 including VAT. It then gives the stock 
as a fringe benefit. Now, I'm going to show it to you in the form of accounting journals so that you understand. So, when I buy the stock, right, I will credit bank that we know with 115,000 rands or creditor. I will debit stock, trading stock. And I will also debit input tax because I claim it, input tax, right? Why? Do I say debit? Because SARS owes me the money, SARS is basically a debtor, debit, right? So, 100,000 is the stock and the input tax is 15,000. So this is when I buy the stock. Now I give the stock as a fringe benefit. Right. And assume for this purposes, trading stock given to me, lower of the cost of market value is the same value. What will be my journal entry then? So well first, before I do it, right, the fringe benefit. What will be the fringe benefit output tax? Okay, so I want you to see. When I give the stock to my staff member, I will credit stock, can you see, of 100,000 rands. That 100,000 over there, that is what I will calculate my output tax on. And how do I do that? Cash equivalent is 100,000 times 15 of 115. That is how I calculate my output tax. So now, a lot of you might already, again, be screaming at the screen saying, but that 100,000 clearly is the amount excluding VAT. Yes, that is, I'm aware of that. It's, no, I'm not, didn't make a mistake here. It is correct. That 100,000 is what is called the cash equivalent for income tax. And the VAT access, you must calculate it on the cash equivalent. So yes, it seems weird that it's on an amount excluding VAT. But that is what the Act tells us. Right, so, we'll credit stock with 100,000. We will debit what? And we'll credit what? So, output tax is always a credit. Why? Creditor, we owe SARS. So, we owe SARS 13,044. You see, they don't agree. That is how it works. What is my debit then? My debit is this total amount over here will be a staff cost, like a salary expense. So 113044. And this entire amount, so including the VAT amount, I can deduct for income tax. And you will see that also when you're looking at income tax. Alright, guys. So I said they times percentage taxable supplies. Remember again. Input, output tax is always calculated 100% except for three situations. An indemnity award, fringe benefits that we see here, and a change in use. So what does that mean? Let's say X Limited is an 80% vendor. So it has stock, so it sells soap, and it also gives residential accommodation. Okay. So this X Limited went and bought trading stock, which is SOAP, 115,000, so we would have been able to claim the full input tax. When they now give it to you as output tax, and you give it to a staff member that works for the entire business, you will then just multiply that output tax by 80%. That's basically what you do here. Right, and you'll see that also in your lecture examples. Then, company car... Probably a bit more popular than the previous ones. Company car, very important. The way to calculate the company car, you can find, they tell you in section 1013, the government gazette, which is the government's newspaper, will tell you how to do it. That government gazette was issued in 1991, and you can find it in regulation 2835 in the back of your student's psycho student handbook, back of the VAT Act. Basically how it works is there are two formulas for motor car and for not a motor car. And here are the formulas. The only difference between the two of them is this percentage over here. Okay, so let me talk you through the calculation. The calculation says, you use the cost excluding VAT. Whether it's a motor car, so remember motor car, input tax is denied. 
and not a motor car input tax is not denied right in both those situations you use the cost excluding VAT even if you couldn't claim VAT cost excluding VAT you then multiply it by 0.3% or 0.6% guys be careful 0.3% is not 3% so on your calculator you don't say 0.3 you say 0.003 okay then from that amount so there's a bracket I want you to see so first one says so like cost times the percentage once you've got that amount from that you will deduct 85 rands always 85 rands or nothing the 85 rands gets deducted if the employee paid the full cost of maintenance so if the employer pays it it's no right then see here there's a so I'm just going to clean it so you can see a little bit clearer there's a big bracket right you then multiply that by 15 over 115 you then multiply by the number of months in the VAT return. So if they ask for the years or 12 year uh, months, if it times 12, if it's for two months, it's times two. It's not times two over 12. So if it's for 10 months, it's not times 10 over 12. No, it's times 10, just like that, okay? And then you multiply it by the percentage taxable supplies. Again, because output tax is 100% always except for fringe benefits and a whole bunch. All right, guys, then there's just one special rule here. It says... In the Government Gazette, you can go and find it. The Government Gazette says, when we're determining this cost here, the value of the motor car, if the employer had the vehicle for more than 12 months before they gave it to the employee, then you need to reduce that cost on the reducing balance method. Okay, so let me explain to you at 15%. So, X Limited is the employer gives Mr. A a company car fringe benefit. The car was purchased on 1 March 2017, let's say. The car was purchased on 1 March 2017 for 114,000 rands including that I was going to say yeah at 14 percent actually guys yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make it 15 percent just the current VAT rate so this is obviously not correct because the first of March 2017 VAT is 14 percent I want you to just follow the principle. Let's not confuse the issue here. All right, so assume that's at 15%. Principle, what do we do? Okay, cars purchased on the 1st of March 2017. Car given as a fringe benefit on 1 April 2019. Okay, so what is the monthly output tax so what I want you to see is this vehicle was purchased for 115,000 rands on the 1st of March 2017 right so when we do this first part cost excluding VAT 115,000 times 100 over 115 now what I want you guys to just see is they tell you this or I tell you it was purchased on the 1st of March 2017 and you gave it to the person on the 1st of April 2019 so how many months is that that is two years plus one month right we ignore everything that's not a full year so we only look at the two years for each of those two years you need to decrease this cost by 15 percent so how do you do it you say times 85 percent that's decreasing it for year one times 85 percent that's decreasing it for year two All right so let me actually just get rid of that bracket over there so that's then taking into account this special rule you don't see it often guys I just wanted to give you one example so now we've done that cost excluding VAT you multiply it now by 0 0.3 percent this guy didn't pay for the maintenance 
right? So times 15 over 115 times one month. And they don't tell us this is an 80% vendor or something like that. Let's say X Limited is an 80% vendor also. Just to give you one complete picture, you will then multiply it by 80%. Right, so the amount will be 115,000 times 100 over 115 times 0 0.85 times 0 0.85. So I've done that, that. Times 0 0.003 times 15 over 115 times 1 times 8. And that gives us 23 rands. Right, 23 rands. That is your output tax on the company car for each month.